vision and nutrition. What you eat can help or hurt you. And those are blueberries, in case no one knew. They're usually not that big. <laughs> if they were, that would be even better. So a quick review, these are the muscles of the eye and with the exercises last time, which was a couple weekends ago, or a couple weeks ago, we actually talked about how to work on the strengthening of the muscles, but you also have to learn how to relax them so they can change the shape of the eyeball itself to help make sure that the focal point is actually where it needs to be. So if you're farsighted or nearsighted, it'll kind of adjust appropriately. So that is the reason that we're doing the exercises. And I'm gonna go over just a couple of those real quick, just to review. Now the part of the relaxation, really big part is the belly breathing. And I like to show off the belly on this one. So remember when you breathe in through the nose, the belly should go out and out through the mouth. This is how we breathe when we were little babies because we just naturally knew how to do that. And that's why babies are so cute. You always want to poke them in the belly because their bellies are always going out like that. So it's in through the nose, out through the mouth. And that really helps to hyper oxygenate the blood. And that's always good for better vision. Now the palming, this is normally done seated, but I demonstrate like so. You have the heels of your hands on the cheekbones, the fingers crossed across the forehead like so, and you do the belly breathing, so it's in through the nose, out through the mouth, and you just focus on darkness. And this is gonna really help to stimulate the rods in the eyes, those are the ones that see low light and black and white, so in through the nose, out through the mouth, and that really helps to focus on the relaxation. And this next one is my absolute favorite. This is the one that I did one time and was able to get rid of my glasses for two and a half years. Yep. So what this does is, as opposed to stimulating the rods that do the low level black and white light, this, this stimulates the cones, which does the color. And so what I did, even though it's a little more advanced, I didn't realize at the time, and it was kind of funny watching me, I was actually standing outside of a Whole Foods, true story, and I look up at the sun and, and it's like super bright. It was the middle of the day and I did my hands like this and like this and that creates a strobe light effect that stimulates the cells and really helps to rejuvenate vision a lot. It was amazing. And then I found out, and I only did that for about three sets of 10 to 15 seconds each. And it, it was amazing. I mean, you see spots for a while because you're staring at the sun. They always say, don't stare at the sun, you're going to burn your retinas. And uh, Dr. Bates, that actually originally came up with this method, he, he, he and his students got taken to court saying they were going to burn people's retinas and things like that. And he had all kinds of clients, celebrity clients back in the 1900s that said, I'm fine, I'm not, I don't have any burned retinas. And they did the just got dismissed. So a lot of times the, the fr people that are blazing a path through the frontier of, of new new opportunities, new chances for a new way of thinking. They, they get criticized in first, at first, and chiropractic was the same way. So now we're going to talk about three of the main conditions that people worry about. Glaucoma, that's an increase in the pressure of the eyeball itself. And when you have increased pressure in the eyeball, it actually starts to put pressure on that optic nerve. And this is going to cause permanent loss of vision, which is really bad, but we actually have foods that will help to relieve that pressure in the eyeball. So if you have any kind of glaucoma or know anyone with glaucoma, really important that you pay attention to that. And I'm also going to give you a downloadable list of all the foods, so it's going to show you what goes with what. So just in case you were wondering. Mm -hmm. and this is another, another big one, age-related macular degeneration. Now, of course, they don't really know what causes this. It's the, the macula in the, in the back of the eyeball and the retina that starts to deteriorate and you can't focus and you start to get blurry vision, especially if you're over age 60. I'm not looking at you, Gary. But it, it's one of those things that... I the, the, I'm looking over there. I'm not looking at you. <laughs> exactly. But it's one of those things where it's, it's kind of like with arthritis. People just say, oh, well, that's part of old age. Well, no, that does not, that's not how it has to be. As patients here know that if you do the proper nutrition, have the proper hydration, get the proper motion in those particular joints, and especially nutrition with the eyeballs, because there's not a joint involved technically, then you're actually going to heal that tissue and it's going to constantly regenerate. And, and as you know, you get your blood is recycled every 120 days, so you have brand new blood cells in there. So in the skeleton, it's, it's 12 to 18 months, you get a brand new skeleton. So if you make sure your bones are aligned properly, then you're not going to have as much arthritis and eventually the body starts to resorb that. I always thought that was kind of neat. And this is also called ARMD, we're going to abbreviate it later, so 
So that's a mouthful, age-related macular degeneration. Now cataracts. Now this, this is the most common thing over the age 40. It's another one that they're not exactly sure what causes it. It's in the lens of the eye itself. Now you've got proteins in there and sometimes it starts off in a really small area and then it can grow and that's when you see people it's kind of has a cloudy look in their eye and that's a really big cause of blindness um, which is really really bad uh, obviously. But um, it's another issue of if you had the proper nutrition, proper hydration, and the muscles of the eye aren't causing a lot of strain on the lens, it's gonna to help to reduce that. And if you already have cataracts, there's some other foods in here that'll help to reduce that and help to clear up that lens, which is hard to believe, I know, but true. Working with the body, that's the secret. Now everybody thinks carrots. Carrots are always great. So I always thought rabbits must be able to see really well because they eat carrots all day long. But what it is, it's the beta carotene in those carrots that, and there's a poster back there that you can actually see when you cut a carrot, um, a cross section, you can look at it and it looks almost like an eyeball. And what it is, is the beta carotene helps act as an antioxidant and actually helps with uh, night vision as well as maintaining the health of the retina itself. So carrots, very good. Eggs. Yep. If you're juicing, that's fine. You don't have to eat it. Like, I mean, anytime you get the contents of the carrot into your system, that's good. Juicing, it'll be even more concentrated, so it's good. But it actually is a, is a problem if you eat too many carrots. I've seen this in one case. If you eat carrots all day long, your skin starts to get, starts to get an orangish tint. So, so cut back if you start to turn orange. <laughs> The eggs, eggs are really great. They contain lutein, zeaxanthin, zinc, and vitamin D. And that helps to fight off the cataracts and the age-related macular degeneration. So right there, eggs is good. And they always talk about, especially in California, oh, you need to have egg whites, don't eat the yolk because of the, the cholesterol and all that. So it's not, it's not true. The cholesterol, that's where all the good nutrients are. And that's where all these great ingredients and, and these great uh, vitamins and minerals are, is, is in the egg yolk itself. Does it matter if it's cooked or raw? Uh, no, doesn't matter. I was like, who said that? I did. Oh. <laughs> I mean, if you fry it, it's going to reduce the, the nutrients a little bit, but you don't want to eat it raw because sometimes they're, they're not the healthiest. And you don't want to do a Rocky where you're chugging down a dozen raw eggs because it oh, can right. be a little rough. Oh, yeah, you can, you, can put, you can put some in there. Yeah. Now, the next one, this is the powerhouse. This is why it was the, the poster child for the nutrition for vision. Blueberries. Very high an antioxidants and vitamin C. Now this is what you can do if you have pressure in the eyeball itself. Eat blueberries every day. Now that, and people always ask, well how many blueberries? Do I have to eat like a bushel basket of blueberries? Like no, you don't, you don't eat that many blueberries. The important thing with this is you can eat consistently blueberries every single day, even if it's just a handful every day. So throw that in your juice, throw it in, in your little smoothie in the morning. It's, it's amazing. I mean this is just, Blueberries are delicious too. I do this every morning in my smoothie. The next one's good too. Fatty fish. This helps to prevent dry eye. It has the uh, omega-3 fatty, do you have dry eye? More fatty fish. They have fatty fish in Canada? Yeah, but you gotta wash the fish though. Well, I know. Well, you don't wanna get a lot of, you definitely don't want farm-raised fish at all. It has to be wild if it's salmon. You can also do uh, mackerel, anchovies, the smaller fish are really, really high in the DHA, which is really, really good. And that is going to be amazing. That also helps with brain function as well. The next one's really interesting too. It's another one for cataracts. Legumes. So lentils and things like that. It is amazing. And this is a really neat stat that I found is that countries that have um, high diets in lentils are significantly lower rates of cataracts. So in India, they eat a lot of lentils and a really significantly lower rate of cataracts. So make sure you're eating more lentils. Got that, Alex? Uh -huh. Okay, just check. <laughs> you look confused. <laughs> and this is the godsend of everybody here in the office. We always talk about coconuts, coconut milk, coconut water. <laughs> the uh, Caprylic acid and the medium chain triglycerides, they act as a second source of energy for the brain. So you don't have to have the glucose all the time, you can actually use this. And it has been amazing results with Parkinson's patients that, and Alzheimer's patients that aren't quite, quite processing the way they should. And you um, can have, they did a study where they had Alzheimer's patients draw a clock before the treatment and they would draw just kind of a couple of squiggles and you could tell they didn't have a clue, they couldn't remember what a clock looked like. But then after a, only a week of, I think it was three to six tablespoons of coconut oil, 
they were able to draw a circle and numbers and it was obviously a clock. So there were obviously some connections that were being made there after the medium chain triglycerides with the coconut milk was incorporated in. So I mean why not always be that way? You want to be on top of your game, have your brain firing all, on all cylinders so to speak. So make sure you incorporate your coconut milk as well as coconut oil, coconut water. Coconut water is amazing because of the electrolytes. So if you're drinking a lot of water, because we always encourage you to drink at least half your body weight in ounces of water, then you might get your electrolytes a little, little diluted. So if you drink coconut water, that actually has the electrolytes in them, so you don't have to worry about diluting your electrolytes out. But this is raw coconut, right? Not the stuff you know they have. You just get a young Thai coconut, crack it open. We have a great video on, on the YouTube channel, how to open up a coconut. Yeah, You can't get that? I bet you could get it shipped. By the time it gets there, it's not good. Ah, the internet's amazing, I bet.